listening to the Dr. Pat Show. It's coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Well, everybody, you heard me come back from the East Coast, not really sounding like my regular Dr. Pat voice. Well, guess what? What do you do when a cough is more than a cold or a flu? Well, it's so timely. We are getting to talk with Dr. Julie Philly and Philip Leapman. Both of them are joining us here today. Dr. Julie, University of Texas Health, Philip NTM Info and Research, and we're going to find out about that. Welcome to both of you. Great to have you here on the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you. You know, look, um, came back from the East Coast, family member in emergency, and so the timeliness of this conversation is so important. But I want to talk and get started with talking about, uh, first of all, the month that we're in, how it may trigger peak cold and flu season. But most importantly, people may not know what NTM is. So, Dr. Julie, let's start with that. Sure, and thank you again for having us. NTM stands for non-tuberculous mycobacteria. It's a big word, so we shortened it to NTM. Much easier to say. But these are bacteria that live in our environment, and they can actually make people sick year-round, unlike cold and flu season. So these are bacteria that we're all exposed to. Uh, they make certain people ill, and they can have symptoms like cough that won't go away many times despite multiple rounds of antibiotics, severe fatigue, weight loss. Some people may even cough up blood. And what we understand is that this is an underrecognized uh, disease process and that the numbers are on the rise. We anticipate diagnosing about 100,000 new cases in 2018 alone. Um, you know, one of the things that I think that we do here in this segment is, and we've been doing it for 15 years on the show, educate and inform people so that they can make choices. And so I want to thank both of you for being here. The other thing we do is we are known as the Disney of podcasting because we tell stories. Philip, that's where you come in. You have a story to tell. I do. Uh, my late wife, Fern, was diagnosed with NTM lung disease after about a six-year delay where she had repeated coughs, uh, was treated with a single antibiotic, would get better for a short while, then would get sick again, and we didn't fully understand what was going on. But there was no internet in 1996 that we could access. Um, it was actually before that that she was ill, but uh, that's when she was diagnosed. So. Once she was diagnosed, uh, we found out that there had been lung damage, lung tissue damage that was fairly extensive. She had bronchiectasis, but she had this stubborn infection called NTM. Uh, the doctors decided that she needed to have multiple antibiotics for an extended period of time. And they also resected her lung and took out a very diseased part. And that went well. The recovery was extremely difficult because she had some complications. Uh, but she persevered at it. Fern wanted to be well, and she lived 18 years after diagnosis. Uh, she battled it. She took the medicines. We did airway clearance. Uh, we understood that this was a, a team effort, a family effort, although I must say Fern was the leader. If a patient wants to do this, the family can support them, but they have to want to do it. Um, so we learned a lot along the way. Um, and we had expert care, doctors like Dr. Philly, uh, various doctors around the country who knew what she had, and there were many consults and shifts and changes in, um, in her therapies and her medications. But that brings me to one of the reasons we're here today, both Dr. Philly and I. There's an opportunity for patients who have these symptoms with the recurring cough to ask to be checked. There's information available to patients. And government, researchers, industry, physicians are all much more interested in NTM lung disease today. I think that's one of the reasons that we're diagnosing more. It's probably uh, growing as well. 
But this gives patients who have this an opportunity to get a treatment in a timely fashion. Mm. You know, I know what it's like to lose a loved one and then become a spokesperson uh, for that person. And that's why I, I, I honor both of you for joining me here today. I want to ask you this question, the same question, actually. Uh, one of the things that you said, Philip, was that you learned a lot. I would imagine that both of you have learned a lot in your journey. I'd like to hear from each of you, starting with you, uh, Dr. Philly, I'd like to hear from each of you what you have learned and what are the most important things in this very short uh, interview, what are the most important things each of you would like to share? Dr. Philly, maybe you could start us off. Oh, sure. I'd be happy to. Um, I became passionate about lung health uh, many years ago, and I'm passionate about under-recognized diseases that, that can cause long-term consequences. So the things I'd like to point out is, number one, this is an under-recognized disease process that it can occur in the lungs and can make perfectly healthy people and people at risk for the infection ill. And number two, that early diagnosis can make people feel better. They, it can impact and improve their quality of life, but it can also prevent further consequences of untreated lung disease and prevent lung damage. And that's incredibly important to me. It's a journey, uh, like Philip said, and, and together with physicians and the right team, people can get better and people can be treated adequately. Mm -hmm. uh, how about you, Philip? Most important thing from a patient's perspective is if you feel that something's wrong, and you're not getting the answers that you need, don't accept a simple answer that we don't know or that it's something that doesn't make sense. You've got a recurrent cough. You've got some of the other symptoms. Pursue it, pursue it, pursue it. As a patient and as a caregiver, trust yourself. Nobody knows more about an individual than that individual themselves. When we started, we had to find information in a library. We found the information by talking to doctors. Since then, through the internet, there are websites that are available. I'd like to mention two. One is aboutntm.com, I'll repeat it, aboutntm.com, and the other was initially developed by my late wife, Fern, from a patient's perspective, and that one is ntminfo.org. Uh, those two websites can give patients a lot of information. Uh, we don't want people to panic, but we don't want to, to ignore symptoms. Stay with it until you get the right answers. Man, I got to tell you, Philip, uh, having just gone through this now, coming back from the East Coast and literally causing a family feud because the questions that we had, both Linda and I had, uh, honestly, everything from we don't understand why he's coughing like that. We don't understand why he's not getting better. Um, you, I, I mean, now we have the Internet so we can fact check. But I will tell you that what you mentioned, we cannot talk about enough. And Dr. Julie, I want to ask you about this because, you know, as we were literally saving a family member's life, uh, the family was very concerned that we were going to upset the doctors by asking questions. I don't think we are an alone family here. I think many families are afraid to do exactly what Philip just said. Well, I, I, and I think you have to be with a physician that you trust and you have to develop your own medical, um, you know, medical team that fits your needs. I don't think doctors are upset if someone mentions something to them, especially if all of their symptoms fit. You know, we live among these bacteria. They're common in our shower heads. They're common in our water supply. Fortunately, they don't make the majority of us sick. But when they do, uh, under-recognized, this can be a life-changing illness to have. And it, there are new and better treatment options all the time. We want people to get the best care they can possibly get. And I can't uh, agree with Philip enough. If you feel like you're not getting the right treatment, you, you may need to seek another opinion. Yeah. And that's why both of you are so important to this conversation, because this is something that can be misconstrued for something else. Right. Exactly. I mean, it's it, yeah, right. Philip uh, and, and Dr. Julie, it's not like you're you're in a realm where you have a symptom that is so unique. This symptom looks like pretty much every other cold and flu, doesn't it? 
Well, I can take that question. I, you know, the symptoms can vary, but you're exactly right. It can mimic many other lung diseases. So, you know, things like a cough that won't go away is a very common problem. And it does not necessarily mean that you have NTM. But certainly, if you are coughing and, and you're not getting the help that you need, or you've taken repetitive antibiotics and you're simply not getting better over long periods of time, this is should be in someone's radar, or at least have a low index of suspicion to test for it. Hmm. Wow. You know, you both, I got to tell you, you are champions for this. I know what it's like. And both of you have touched on a couple of very important points. Yes, Dr. Julie, I agree with you. You know, find a physician like Dr. Julie. I mean, there's only one of Dr. Julie, so you can't like, everybody can't have her. That, that's, that, that's true. There is only one. That's true. <laughs> and Philip, how fortunate are you, right, uh, to Absolutely. be out here speaking? One last question. I'd love to know from each of you, what's your personal message? And please give us that website again. Well, my personal message is, again, get the help that you need. If you have a chronic cough or a cough that won't go away, seek other advice and educate yourself uh, about NTM. The websites are aboutntm.com and ntminfo.org. Uh, and I just appreciate you so much for having us here today. Mm -hmm. Big message. Thank Big you. message. Thank Philip, you. you, how about you? Please? Wonderful interview. Dr. Philly said exactly what I was thinking just now. Um, continue to seek answers. Don't be afraid of seeking answers. And this is treatable. So don't be afraid of being diagnosed because if you're not feeling well, try to find out what's going on. And you know, I get a little choked up sometimes. And um, I got to thank Fern. I got to take a thank minute to thank Fern, if you don't mind. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. Fern was not afraid to go public. She was not afraid for people to know that she had a lung infection. And that's why she developed the website. That's why she wanted to talk to people. And I know that she's happy we're doing this. Thank you so much for acknowledging her. All right. Oh, boy. Well, thank you both. Uh, we're going to take a short break, everyone. Please, please, please go to these websites. Don't take no for an answer. Dig deep, help your loved ones, help yourself. We'll be right back.